Hello, it's the rain season again. And at this point in time, of course, we think about the inputs that go into agriculture. You're going to be in an agro-based economy and most of us depending on agriculture, one way or another. Of course, we look at the fertilizers that you need, we look at the pesticides that you're going to need, but above it all is the way we're going to handle the harvest that we're going to get out of the gardens. Post-harvest handling is another critical area to look at. We've shared tips here before and what came out strongly is the fact that most of the losses happen at this stage but on this show we will dedicate more time to continue giving you counsel on how you can circumvent all those challenges to make money i am charles Wood, your host welcome to money and market coming up on the show unpacking the cost of red tape to business how biogas technology is helping to power a school kitchen and Different, how cryptocurrency uh, information is heavily guarded to be kept and protected through in, the blockchain in, in, technology. In now, making it in business requires respect for certain values or practices. Now, these are critical because the external factors like lending, financing, all anchor on those values. Today, we explore some of these and how we can turn them around to build sustainable businesses. Adonis, it's nice to have you on the show, Money and Markets. Now, we hear everyone is talking about the micro, small and medium enterprises driving this economy. How would you gauge the performance of our SMEs? Uganda has one of the best entrepreneurial rates in the world. And you know statistics do not lie. We must accept that Ugandans are enterprising by nature. However, while that is true, we must also recognize that also Uganda has one of the highest failure rates of enterprises. So where does that leave us? It means there are certain things within us, internal factors, that we must work on in order for our enterprises to survive. And one of them is the mental preparation. Mental preparation, it has to do with an individual being confident of what they are doing knowing what they are doing and focusing on it with the heart of success. But two, there must also be longer-term vision, longer-term fo focus, rather than the short-term gratification, which actually kills the men of our enterprises. You must always focus on what are your longer-term objectives, what is it that you want to achieve, are you running a business to sell, are you running a business to own, now, you bring out very important issues. Now, where can our entrepreneurs go and pick this knowledge and issues? You can actually read on the internet. That is the biggest source because today, ICT is one of the best variables. The best you can ingredient you can put in business. And so the starting point, be IT literate. Look for innovations elsewhere. People are sharing knowledge every day. Internet is one of them. Of course, the other, you can go for role models. And you say role model doesn't need to be the most successful. Can also be the most failed person. Okay? I'm sure today, banks are starting are surviving just because Uganda Cooperative Bank and the other banks collapsed. So today, people are looking at the collapsed banks as examples for them to survive. But of course, the other aspect, look at successes. Any business that has succeeded is like a person who has lived longer. Indian companies which are here, look at Mukwan. How long have those companies survived? Kachira, how long has it been there? The nice house of plastics and those other Mukwan industries. And now for them, they have some, for Mulwana has something very unique is that he, he has passed off on his business to another generation, which is a very good thing. And that is a success story you can be able to learn from. Now, looking at the external aspect of it, because we've talked quite some stuff about the internal aspects, how can we reach out to these people? I'm talking about the small and micro entrepreneurs, because most of the program seems to focus on the big guys. Well, why many enterprises, especially SMEs, are dying? For you, the Ugandan case, the issue is simple. It is just leadership. Okay? 
Many people have confused leadership or leadership will from a political will. The two are different. Uganda will have political will, we do not have leadership will. Because leadership starts by understanding the culture and building a culture on a long-term perspective. For example, you may have a good idea in the start. It is easy to start a restaurant that feeds 5, 10, 20 people. But it is very difficult to sustain a, a restaurant that serves 100 people and above. You need development financing. You will need a structure. You are not going to build a structure from uh, commercial loans. You need development loan to do that. So this is where the issue of leadership should come in. Okay? Create financing that is cheaper for everybody who reaches in a particular bracket and let businesses survive on their own rather than supporting businesses with political inclinations. In terms of models or examples, where can Uganda draw these examples globally? Which countries have made it and can offer good lessons for Uganda? At least uh, Singapore at one time we are at the same level with them. But when leadership had the will to transform its uh, business, business people, they did it. The other is of course India. It has one of the longest surviving family businesses you can talk about. Examples are many. Talk about Japan because they have a longer term vision of the enterprises. They do not look at themselves. We need to begin thinking beyond the faces we see that started those businesses to the faces probably in our family trees that will never hear our names. But they will know we had a grandfather or a grandmother who started this. You need to recognize that we cannot start from nothing. We must take baby steps. And one of the best baby steps would have been to partner with those people that come here. Instead of allowing them to do a road alone, let them, let them start by partnering with indigenous people. Through that, of course we have the jobs which they don't have. But for us, we lack the skills and the resilience to run those businesses, especially when we grow. Actually, our problem here, we are good at starting, but we are very bad at managing success or growth. But if we can learn to manage growth, if we can learn to manage success, then enterprises will survive. Well, we've already picked pointers on the importance of the virtues that you have to respect as an entrepreneur to make it in business. Now, beyond that, the environment where you sit has a strong bearing on whether you succeed or fail. And here we're looking at the regulatory environment, taxes, and the laws under which you operate. Now, in this segment, we look at the minds of different entrepreneurs, or business people for that matter, and what they think of the policy environment under which Ugandan businesses operate. Bureaucracy or red tape is often decried by the private sector. This is normally referenced in relationship to the protracted private sector dealings or transactions with government agencies. Not to discount the good grounds so far covered by government to ease doing business, some members of the private sector still feel that the red tape persists in relation to effecting critical regulatory decisions. Let me give you another example apart from Kirembe. Oil. Oil. We have got five centers of power in government. The land attorney general must decide whether this agreement is correct or not. The minister of finance must decide whether this is economically correct or not. The minister for energy, minerals, and oil will decide whether this is the right thing to do or not. The petroleum authority will decide this is not going to be licensed. The National Oil Company will decide. By the time each one of these people have decided and have met oil, oil companies, there will be no decision for one year. And as a result, Uganda will not be seeing oil produced, uh, I bet, in 2020. This, according to private sector players, is not only hurting business, but is also a private sector growth dampener. Private sector leaders also counsel that government and especially its technical staff 
need to have a business mind to retouch this picture. We have failed to become Uganda incorporated. We have failed to run our country as a business. We have run our government, our country as a government. The other area where government is being advised to extend effort is in ensuring consistent and predictable business policy regimes. When I had the representative, the minister, the secretary to the uh, treasury, I had you very clearly. You have now edited the strategic crops that have been in the strategic plan of the Minister of Agriculture. From 12, you are now on 6. 9? Okay. Where do you leave these others? And not only have you edited such a policy, there are more policies being edited now. We have, like, for example, the Rural Industrial Project, which was designed 1622. Now I hear something else is coming before the other is implemented. Some pundits are also having second thoughts about the free market economic dispensation, stressing the importance of active government participation in business. When it is the foreign investor coming in to take over an enterprise, 100% support. That very day he lands in the country, he gets the highest office attention. You, a private sector, you will never get the attention of those power centers and therefore you will die in the oblivion. How do we address these inconsistencies? The role of government development is not just to make policy, it's to ensure that the policies are implemented. We have the best policies on paper, where is the implementation? Uh, you can say, Professor, when you were Minister for Investment, what did you do? Uh, yes, but this is a challenge. We are fond of saying, at the time of independence, we are better off than Singapore. So what? Singapore, the role of government with the tigers was crucial. Government brought about the transformation with the private sector. And you know, a professor, I've, I've been a, a liberalizer for a very long time. But now I think at one stage I was misguided. Government must play a role. And it's Hello. It's the rain season again. And at this point in time, of course, we think about the inputs that go into agriculture. Uganda being an agro-based economy and most of us depending on agriculture, one way or another. Of course, we look at the fertilizers that you need. We look at the pesticides that you're going to need. But above it all is the way we're going to handle the harvest that we're going to get out of the gardens. Post-harvest handling is another critical area to look at. We've shared tips here before and what came out strongly is the fact that most of the losses happen at this stage but on this show we will dedicate more time to continue giving you counsel on how you can circumvent all those challenges to make money i am charles Wood, your host welcome to money and market coming up on the show unpacking the cost of red tape to business how biogas technology